aware that if you wish to discuss even a single aspect of peace, you will find that its scope is not limited, but will continue to expand. I will try to cover at least some aspects of Islam's true teachings. Today's world has become like a global village. Indeed, in many countries, there is a significant population of foreign immigrants. In terms of currency, the world should be united. In terms of free business and trade, the world should be united. And in terms of freedom of movement and immigration, cohesive and practical policies should be developed so that the world can become united. Differences of nationality, color or ethnicity act merely as a form of identity and recognition. All forms, forms of cruelty, wherever they exist, must be eradicated and stopped. Islam teaches that the wealth and resources of others should not be looked upon enviously. We have been graced with the presence of the President of the European Parliament, uh, Mr. Martin Schulz. I used to be afraid, but today he brought my mind down. If we have three men like this worldwide and people can listen, listen to him, the world will change. The president cannot speak like this. His words carry power. His words carry wisdom. His words carry blessing. I was astonished at the turnout. Uh, there must have been five or six hundred people there. I know there were people from all faiths, uh, all religions. Uh, today was not about anything other than the central message of promoting peace. Uh, you know, a leader of his community, but also wearing a political hat to other spiritual leaders globally. The message today was, uh, uh, which is the core theme of, of the Amalias, which has been repeated to me time and time again, a genuine commitment to love for all, hatred for none. And that is the main message.